Morning, Margaret. Good, how are you? Yeah, I got everybody except you. No worries. Take your time. No worries. You're never late. I was I was concerned. I was like, oh no, did she have problems this morning? And you're still on time, so don't worry about it. Did I punch your card, Lorraine? Yeah. I did? Okay. I thought I did, but I didn't see it there, so. Actually, don't get, don't start there yet, because Margaret's coming, and we're going to start the structured warm up earlier. So just do it again. We're going to start the warm up again, yeah, because it act technically doesn't start till 7:30, and Margaret just got here. I know. Yep. Margaret's never late. Uh, Still yeah. Okay. Margaret? Here, come on. Margaret. Okay. Awesome. You're late. What's going on? Here? I have to do work at home. And then I'm like, okay, I got to finish it. Okay. I'm never late. That's all. I'm over. Try not to, but. Uh, yep. Yeah, okay. All right. You and I will warm up together. All right. You and I warm up together. All right, so you know the structure warm up. We're going to start in the center. We want to go blue line to blue line, approximately. Good. Now we'll go down one side. We'll go down this side. One, this side. Two. Good. Now we'll go down this side. No worries. Yeah. Oops. So you might want to move your contact point a little further out front. Just a little. You might want to move your contact point just a little further out front. Really reach for it, uh, and that'll become important later. So. Okay, diagonal now. Oops. Ah. Ah. 
All right, back hand. All right, now we're going to do the figure eight. I'll start straight. Oops. All right, now I'll be diagonal, you be straight. Oops. Come on. Good. All right, long diagonals. You want to go, and I'll uh, we'll start forehand. The other side now, backhand. Good. Okay, now we're going to come in and do reaction volleys. So heels on the blue line. We're just going to volley back and forth. We're going to do about 100 of these. And we want to keep them between uh, belly button and chin. Oops, sorry. My grip slipped. bit lower. Try and keep it a little tighter than that. Oh, good. You're good at this. Yep. So you want to keep those within one paddle height of the net. Um, otherwise you're popping them up and people are going to be putting them away on you. Okay. Oh, jeez. Now we back up, do the same thing from behind the blue line. Oops. Some of them are going to hit the ground and that's just fine. We'd rather them be going down than up, right? Sorry, we weren't quite ready for that one.
Oops, sorry, got one. So now we come in halfway, and we're just going to do a little, little closer. A little closer, we're going to do fast hands. Just very gentle. So not quite so deep. I'm going to aim for my paddle, which is about here. I'm going to aim for your paddle. So you want to try to not force me to push my elbow back. There we go. And once we get a rhythm going, we can get it going really fast. Oops. <laughs> once you lose control of it, it's hard to get control back. Oh, sorry, man. We got a rhythm. Oops. Push that one a little deep on you. So the uh, sweet spot in your paddle is halfway between your handle and your butt. Not halfway from here to here, halfway from here to here. What this drill does is teach you to focus on finding the actual sweet spot in your paddle, top to bottom, because if you're consistent about hitting this in the sweet spot, you're going to get a consistent bounce. At this short distance, it's really important. Consistency matters, right? So that's what this drill's all about. Yep, that's, all, that's it. All right, we're going to do... Uh, All right, when you've done this, do uh, resets, and uh, boy, that's fast. Like, we're 10 minutes in, and you guys are almost done. Uh, no, we'll do the reset, one person feeding, the other person resetting, uh, and then switch. Yeah, you have to be careful. This side will have to be the feeders. Okay, so. All right, so you're going to be over here at the white line. Yep. White line, yep. So you're going to be at the white line. I'm just going to feed you uh, shots. Some of them will be off the ground, some of them will be out of the air. You put everything back in the kitchen. Okay? Right on the ground. Yeah, okay. no worries. Good job. Got it. Okay, same thing. I'm putting everything in the kitchen. Just 
Try it. Hold on. Oops. Okay. We'll switch around. Normally I would back up and you would come forward. We got the machine behind us today, so. Oh. Right into my left toe. Remember what I was talking about? You want to keep your contact point further out front? This is why, right here. Uh-oh. So a dink and a drop are pretty much the same thing. If you develop a good habit for the contact point on your dinks, it'll make your drops better. So That way you're not having separate contact points for each shot. Yeah, you always want to reach. If, it's, if you take it too close into you and it's got any kind of topspin on it, it's going to pop every time. That's why you want to develop the habit of taking it as far out as you can, as you can manage, because uh, then it reduces pop-ups. So. Let's go back and do another set. They're, they're not quite ready yet. We'll switch. Yeah. But you know, hitting the net a lot is this, the first progression to getting it just over the net, right? So it's not necessarily a bad thing. I'd rather you hit the net, like within three inches of the tape, than be popping them up, up, up here, right? No. Ah, sorry. Ah, that was my bad, bad feeds. Good job. Yeah, much better. Good contact point. Yeah. Good choice. So don't be afraid to step up and take some of these out of the air. Uh 
up. Let's try. Let's try. All right, let's switch. Uh-oh. All right, that's good. Well done. Good warm up. <clears throat> okay. Let's go have a drink and then we'll come back and we'll have a chat and then we'll figure out uh then we'll start using the ball machine. Did I start the camera? I don't know if I did. I did. She always looks at the positive numbers. I always look at the negative numbers. Well, we have very I different think. minds. Rat, for sure. When I'm watching my students, I'm counting the positive numbers. But when I'm training myself, counting my own, I'm thinking of the negative numbers. 
How many did it's I? Messed up. <laughs> so, if, if, if you're a parent, you know you don't do that shit. No. I'm so don't why would you do? It? So why would you do it for yourself? I don't do it for anybody else. So then why would you do it for yourself? Because it's not that I'm negative. It's that you are. You need something to strive for. No, I'm actually not. There will be something to strive for regardless. Okay. Uh, so today we're working on blocks and volleys, or sorry, uh, blocks, drives and blocks. The last couple times we've done this, we focused on the drive component. Today we're going to be really focused on the block component, which is why I've set the ball machines up. Um, we're going to go in the room and we're going to talk about uh, basically uh, tactical goals behind volleys. Um, uh, but I want to cover the teaching points right now. So the most important things to remember about volleys. When the Ball comes out of the machine, so we're starting in our ready position. Ball comes out of the machine, the first thing that turns is our paddle head. So, is it going to be a forehand, is it going to be a backhand? Right? You want to start turning your paddle head before you start moving your arm to receive. Okay? So, first thing you move is your face, then you move your body or your arm, whatever you need to do. I want you, everybody to try and keep shoulder to elbow relaxed. When we do this, as soon as I lift my arm away from my body, my lats engage, my abs engage, my uh, traps engage. Can you call this one back here? Deltoid. Yeah, so you engage a whole bunch of muscles as soon as you move this elbow away from your body. And now you've introduced tension into your volleys. Right? The more muscles that you have engaged in your volleys, the more tension you have. The more tension you have, the softer, the harder it is to control, especially the soft volleys. Even your long volleys, even your deep volleys, if you're starting from tension, they're much harder to control it for the distance out. So it's really important to just work on letting the shoulder hang in its natural position to prevent all of these other muscles from becoming engaged unnecessarily. It's not that you're not going to engage them, but you want them to fire at the right time. And if you get them too soon, you're going to be receiving the ball too hard with too much tension and you're not going to be able to control it. So let's work on that today. I really want people to avoid getting this elbow up Right? Sometimes you have to. Sometimes a ball, you're thinking it's going to come in on you here, and suddenly it's over here, and you end up having to do one of these. That's fine. That's, as long as that's the exception, not the rule, we're fine. If you're receiving all of your, your uh, backhand volleys with your elbow up, we've got a problem. Right? So we want to try and keep our elbow down. So remember that we, we always, from recovery position, um, we, we're, we're always moving to hit our stroke, uh, and then back to recovery position. So movement is not just like a stationary, if I don't have to move my feet, just move my paddle. But most of the time I'm going to have to move left, I'm going to have to move right, sometimes I'm going to have to take a step. What we don't want to be doing is reaching, because now we have everything firing in here, and we have weakness in here. So we want to step over and take those and try and let the shoulder hang in this position. That's what we're going to try to do on our blocks today. Okay, now let's go. Any questions about that? Let's go talk about the tactical context of blocks. Angela and I are going to do a demonstration. <laughs> All right, so when I give you a short ball, come forward. Okay. So if I have, I'm at the net and Angela's at the back, she's at the baseline. Right? If I give her a ball at the baseline, she has no choice but to take it at the baseline. But if I give her a short ball, I'm inviting her up. Right? I don't want to invite her up. If I invite her up, I want to give her one of these that she can't get to. Right? Yeah, she got it. She did get there. She wasn't in control, though, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, when we volley deep, we keep our opponents back. We want to keep them back until we're absolutely sure that we can hit a short volley. So if I'm, if there's any question about the ball coming to me, am I going to be able to control this on a short volley? I'm not 100% sure. I just keep it deep. Right? The ideal time to hit a short volley is when I get her. That would not be the time. Sorry, that was a really bad hit. Back up again. If I can get her back, so both of her feet are behind the baseline, then I hit a short one. Right? So if, if she's got both feet in the court, 
it's probably not a good time for me to hit a short volley. If I can get her with both feet behind the baseline, good time to hit a short volley. Okay? So if you look at how these cones are set up, we've got two zones. We've got the kitchen, and we've got our deep zone. We don't want to be volleying anything into this middle zone. Now, it's going to happen accidentally. It's going to happen sometimes when you flub a shot. That's fine. Sometimes you're going to have to reach for something, and you're just trying to get it back in the court. Anywhere you get it in the court, that's okay. But if we have control, if we have mastery of the moment, we want to be able to put our deep shots deep and our shallow shots shallow, shallow, and we want nothing in this middle zone in between because that's just inviting your opponent forward. You've done all the work to get them to the back. Don't give them a free pass to come forward. Okay, so that's what we're going to work on. We've got the ball machine set up. We're going to have two people over there, two people over here. Um, you're going to be working on hitting some short and some long. You can decide which. You're also going to be working in pairs at the net. You need to communicate, especially if we have a lefty and a righty in the center, right? You need to say mine, right? You need to communicate. So that's the two things we're going to be working on today is our volleys and communicating with our partner at the net. The ball machine is going to be spraying, it's going to be on an arc. Angela will work in on one machine. I will work in on the other, so there'll be three of us on each machine. All right, any questions about what we're doing? Yep. Do the ball have to Yep. We're just working on short and long, short and long right now. This is a skill. Yeah. yeah. You can pick whatever, whichever ball is coming towards you, you decide. Am I going to be able to take this short? Am I going to be, am I going to, be able to take it long? Right? You got to call it. I want you to call it. Whoever thinks that they can get it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You got to call it because we have a lefty here today. Okay. So we're communication. Okay. So the three of you can go start over there. We'll start over here, and uh, you can go up to the machine, Rita. Oh, whoever's not at the at the net is just going to grab a tube and pick up balls. Once you've dumped your tube, go to the net, and the next person will rotate out. Uh, till the other person's done picking up a tube and comes to the net, or par partial tube, whatever. All right. No, right up the right up the blue line, Margaret. You can go to the blue line, Rita. You can go to the blue line. Right up the blue line. Yeah. Well, don't think of it that way. Don't feel that you have to go short long. Look at the ball that you're receiving, and make a decision. But only short or only long. Call him. Call him. Don't swing at him. Just block him. Just block him.
You don't need to swing it when you're this close to the net. You don't need to swing. Good job. Okay, I picked up my tube, so now I'm coming in. You're going to slide out. You're going to slide over. Yours. Mine. Yours. Oh, I should have taken that. Oh, geez, I wasn't paying attention. Mine. Rita, watch my technique. Oops, except that. I'm not swinging at it. Just blocking. Okay, you can come and come and hop in, Rita. Just one tube. That's all you need to pick up. Yeah, that's enough. Come on over. This is going to be mine. Here's yours. Yeah, just relax. Uh oh. This is mine. So when I want to hit him soft, Rita, I really soften up my grip. I really relax my grip. When I want to hit him deeper, I just firm up my grip, firm up my wrist. Yeah, that's enough. Okay. Good job keeping your shoulder relaxed, Margaret. Good job, Rita.
What's on your left foot there, Rita? Behind you, Rita. I'm behind you. Okay, let's rotate. Good. Oh, nice. Nice, relaxing. Job. That was a bad one. All right. Oh, sorry. Mine. Yours. First. Yeah, so just relax your grip when they're when you're gonna hit them soft. Relax your grip. Good. You're getting lots of backspin on your uh, drops now. Mine. Oh, yours. That was yours. Absolutely. I'm too close to you. Three. Yeah, right, there you go. You're in. Lots of balls, eh? I'm keeping my shoulder relaxed. For the short shots, you got to keep your grip really loose. For the deep shots, you got to firm it up a little bit. Oops, that was a bad hit. There you go, very nice. Last one. Oh, of course I missed it.
Okay, go take care of that. No, keep going. Communicate. Somebody has to say mine or yours. Give me one second. All right, let's pause the machines, do a pickup. Then we're going to do a slightly different drill. Cool. Yeah, sort, sort the balls now. Uh, and we're just going to try this machine. What was your question, Angela? No. 
Uh, you can throw the green. Well, actually, hang on. I want to see how this works over here. I might split it up into two machines. We're going to do something a little bit different now. Yeah. Good. Okay. So, I don't know. Can you turn on this machine when I ask you to, please? We're going to make two lines back here. Uh, and we're going to have two people picking up. So I'm going to start at the baseline. You can turn uh, turn off the uh, only turn on the top switch while I demonstrate this. Okay? No, just wait there. So it's going to fire. I'm going to come up. I'm going to be here. I'm going to block. Okay? Then I'm going to come out. Next person is going to come up. Take a ground stroke, uh, a block, and then circle back. So we're going to have three people circling here. We'll have three people circling on the other side. Okay, so let's just get a three-person circle going on here so you can see what it looks like. So Tim and uh, Rita, come back here. Tim, you can be next. Just out. Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. So Tim's going to be behind me. Just let me do the demonstration. So I'm going to hit a ground stroke. I'm going to come up. I'm going to hit a block, and then I'm going to come out. Tim's going to hit a ground stroke, a block, and then he's going to come out. Or he's going to hit a ground stroke, a block, and come out. Ground stroke, block. You can shut it off. That's good. Okay. Awesome. So we're going to have one of those going over there and one of these going over here. Uh, yes. Well, yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yep. Ah, uh, you can leave those there because they still need them for their block, right? You want to just a, it can be either or. Whichever, it, as long as it's firing to a decent spot. It can even be in the center. It doesn't really matter. Okay, I will. Yeah, it's going to be okay. Up, up, up. You got to be ready for that block. Okay, you're out. Ground stroke, block. Ground stroke. Block. Sorry, ladies. Here we go. Ground stroke. Up for the block. Ground stroke. Up for the block. Get ground stroke. Up for the block. Okay, so I'm going to hit my ground stroke deep. And then I'm going to come up, and I'm going to block short. So ground stroke deep, block short. Good. Ah, block short. Good job. That was excellent. Ground stroke deep, block short. Nice, Margaret. Ground stroke deep, block, short. Nice, Margaret. Maria, it was good. Oh, out. Nice. Oh, I missed it. Nice. 
Oh! That's uh, out. Okay. So shut off the machine before we pick up. No, just leave the green ones. It's okay. Too late now. There we go. Okay, you guys go get in line. Now we're going to be firing to this court. So we're going to be working on this side now. Uh-oh. Nice low drive, Margaret. Oh! Those two fails. So you guys keep going. Oh, 
I didn't realize we were almost out. <laughs> okay, so don't put them back in the machine. We're going to put them in the basket, which is under here. Yep. Why? Okay. All right, so now we're going to wrap up and uh, we're going to take a drink and then we're going to come back and play some games. Let me get the machines out of the room. Uh, you can bring them right in here. Yeah. We'll just get them out of the way right now. Thank you. She's kind of nice because you missed the last balls. Are we taking them? Yeah, we've got to bring the machines back. We'll need the cones too. We just need one ball, right? Yeah, we'll just need, uh, I'll, I'll bring some. Awesome, just set it there, right there, perfect. I'll deal with this stuff later after practice. Tables, you gotta you put the legs back in place first. So, oh, that one's done already. This one done already? Nope. There we are. That one's done already. Switch finger. Okay. Awesome. Oops. Do the tables go right? Do I tell him to put them, or do they go in the in the? They go. They go in the the room, the equipment room. The equipment room? Yep, where the doors. Okay. No, no, same place. Court can just go back in the hallway. We can pick up the cups. Right here. Somewhere? Right here. Tables go right here. Not very scientific. <laughs> Oh, light. Ah, yeah, they go back there. Perfect. No, we're good. That's everything. That's everything for that part. Yeah, well, it'll stay on because we're going to play our games here now. So. All right, go to the washroom, take a drink, whatever you need to do.
We'll get started in about two minutes. <clears throat> oh, I need some orange balls. Some orange balls. Three will be enough. I put it right up here. So you go to the net and be a blocker. Oh, uh, yeah. I, got, I just got to demonstrate the drill. Oh, yeah. I'll get that in a few minutes here. Okay, so I'm just going to go to the net. Tim's going to be my partner. Margaret's going to be there. Uh, we're just waiting for Rita. Here's Rita. Okay, so one of the things that um, we have to work on in development is your fear of the ball when you're standing at the kitchen line. Um, so one of the ways that we do that is we work on this drill. So this is a drill that makes you face your fear of taking a drive from inside the court. Uh, and blocking it and, and not not ducking and running and dodging and right so we're not going to swing at a hundred percent we're going to swing at a fifty percent speed we're going to block it that's what's going to start the drive so we're going to play the game so this is we'll just play a point out you guys ready we're just going to play this point out ready yeah you can put it anywhere you want so we're going to draw I'm going to drive from both feet inside the court right one foot has to be behind this green line. Okay, and then we're going to play out the point. Oh, that would be my point. Okay. No. But that was friendly. That was 50%. Okay, and I'll play it out. There we go. Okay. So, so we'll play a few practice points, and then we'll introduce scoring. But for now, I want everybody to just become accustomed to this. Okay, I'm going to put you on that post. Lorraine, you can be right here. Thank you. Rita, you're right there. Actually, we'll reverse Rita and Tim. Tim, you can drive to start. Yeah, I'll get that. Yeah, you can get it. Go, you have to go inside and lock it, and then come around. Lock, play out the point. Okay, that's fine. Now just rotate one position. Yeah, just for now. We're just playing a few points so people get used to how the rhythm of the game goes. And then we'll introduce scoring. Hold on. Okay. Rotate one position. Out. Rotate. God, that was a great block. Okay, rotate. Oh, sorry. Oh, right beside you. Pause, 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 pause. So, Margaret, when you make your serve, one foot has to be behind. Yeah, exactly. Right, so, everybody, just so we're clear on this, when you serve, I want you straddling this line so that you're inside the court. We're simulating a drive in the middle of a point. Good. Okay. Ah, good luck. <clears throat> oh, 
Hold on. <coughs> Rotate. Oh. oh. Okay, pause for a second. Okay, let's talk about the skills that we're working on now. So, obviously this person's working on their drive skill. The objective here isn't to hit it hard and high. The objective here is to hit it low so that it arcs over the net, so that it forces the blocker to block up. If they're forced to block up, they're much more likely to block it to midcourt, which gives you an opportunity to move forward. That's why we call it the opportunity game. You're watching for opportunities when you're the baseline team to move forward. Now, this team should win every point once we get into the scoring. The team at the net, because they have the advantage because that team's back. So one of the ways that you can gain the advantage back is with good drives. If you create a drive that arcs and has enough top spin, it gets popped up into the opportunity zone, then you have the opportunity to move forward and reset the point. Now you're back to neutral. Getting back to neutral is the first step towards winning the point, regaining the offense, right? So that's one of the skills we're working on. It's an important skill to be able to arc your drive. We're also working, obviously, on the blocking skills, right? Block it deep, block it short, never block it into the center. The other thing that's really, really important to keep in mind is we're working on our mental mapping skills. Where are the lines? Which balls are going out? It is a skill not to hit a ball. It is a skill to read a ball, choose not to hit it, and let it land out. That's a skill you have to work on developing. It doesn't happen by accident, right? The only way that you can work on this skill is to let balls go by you and see where they land. That will help you with your reading, right? If you're always blocking everything, you never know what's going out. You're guessing, right? The more in practice you let balls go by you and land in and give up practice points, which don't mean a damn thing, the better you'll get at allowing balls to go out when the points do mean something. Okay, so work on all three of those skills today. Mental mapping is an important part of this. Any questions? Yeah? Oh, for sure. Yeah, we're playing out. This is a real game situation. So, all right. Tim, you got a ball? There you go. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, either or. So we've been starting diagonally just to kind of set the game, show people how to play the game. But you can serve to either player. Right? Either player. You both have to be ready. You can put it in the middle. Yeah, you can put it anywhere you want. Anywhere you want. That was a good drive. It was a good drive. So. What was great about that drive is it was low to the backhand side and it was dipping when it crossed net. It wasn't 100 miles an hour, but it was dropping, it was to the middle, and it was still the range backhand side. Perfect. Yeah, good. Good. It was a good drive, Lorraine. Low to the backhand side. Low to the backhand side. It was a great drive. Oh. Yeah. Oh, boy. That was going out. That was going out. <laughs> gotta be awake you guys gotta be awake that's twice he's done that to you but Tim Tim give them a second they were still looking at their feet to try and figure out where they were so make sure they're set hang on yep make sure you're cross you're straddling the line good job okay stop that was excellent so why are we starting here it's a, we're, pre, we're pretending it's a point in the middle of the game. This is a middle position. Remember what I said. You do not want to hit a, draw, a short shot if your opponent, both of your opponent's feet are inside the baseline. Right? So we're starting with both opponent's feet inside the baseline. So if you're going to hit a short, it better be damn good because they have an opportunity to get it. You're much better off to hit your first drive deep, push their feet back across the baseline, then hit your next shot short. That's true. Yeah. Okay, stop. Yeah. 
Okay, let's talk about respect the X. This is a good drill for that. That's a fourth skill. We can kind of relate it to what we're doing. So I need you to step off the court, Lorraine, and Tim, step off the court. Okay, so there's four of us. The middle is protected by who's ever, so if, if the so if the ball is coming to me, it's Rita's job to cover the middle. If the ball's going to Margaret, it's her job to cover the middle. It doesn't matter who's right or who's left-handed, right? You, it's your job to cover the middle, regardless when the player diagonal to you is hitting the ball. So even if I hit a ball really close to Angela, it's still your ball to get unless Angela calls it. You understand what I'm saying? Right? So that's the simplest way to cover the middle. It's the most effective way to cover the middle. When the person diagonal to you is hitting the ball, regardless of where they are on the court, it's your job to cover the middle. Okay? Unless your opponent calls it and steps in front of it and breaks the X. Yep? Yeah, calling helps regardless of which system you're playing. Okay? You can come on in, Lorraine. Okay, be ready. Ball could come to either one of you. Be ready. That was actually Rita's. In the court. Good. Okay. You got away with a drop there. It was pretty good. Yeah, it was short and it stayed low. So you got away with that one. Yep. In. Good job. Push it back deep. There you go, Tim. Good job. Let them get reset. Oh. Oh, there it is again. So, Rita, you understand that's your ball, right? Yeah. Okay, so you can be ready next time. Hang on. Hang on. Who's covering the middle? Who's covering the middle? Why? Exactly. Your job to cover, even though it's your backhand, it's your job to cover the middle. And I'm going to choose not to go up the middle. <laughs> Who's covering the middle? There we go. Oh, good get, Margaret. Pause there one turn. Pause there one turn. Good. Okay. Fault! Fault! <laughs> yeah. Good job. Way to cover the middle. Pause. Pause. Thank you. Thank you for pausing. Notice where this player is standing. She's inside the court, right? So deep to her backhand side is a really good place to potentially put this ball, depending on the ball that you get, right? If she's standing back here, you're going to put it short. If she's standing inside the court, they're both inside the court, you're thinking deep on your first ball. Yeah. 
Uh, no, if, if you see that she's hitting a drive, you don't want to be forward, you want to be back. I want to be behind her if she's hitting a drive? You're just a little bit behind her, but you want to have both your feet out of the court because you'd rather have a short ball that you can approach on than a deep ball that you have to back out on. <laughs> That's okay. All right. So that was a good drive in, that was a good uh, block into her feet. Okay. Okay. Oh, nice lob. Good. No, he's in. Who's in? In. Oh, just out. You're going to pause one turn here. Out. Good coverage, Lirita. Coverage out of the middle. Well done. Good coverage. Good job. Pause one, pause one turn here. Good coverage, Rita. Way to cover the middle. Right here. Out. Choice, your partner, he was forward. That's twice you've hit Rita. Oh, whose job was it to cover the middle? Good. Margaret, that was excellent. Hardly hit that, but you forced her to hit up and it went out. Pause one second, one turn. Cut right. Nice. Whose job is it to cover the middle? In. Nice. 
Here we go. Oh, not quite. Whose job was it to cover the middle? <laughs> Whoa. Good job, good middle coverage. Pause once, Angela. Pause once. Good, Margaret. Great block right into the. <clears throat> you don't have to block anymore. You don't have to stop anymore, Angela. Out. Oh, I mean, uh, oops. It's your turn to cover the middle. It's your job to cover the middle. It's your job to cover the middle. If she doesn't call it, it's your job to cover it. I think we'll watch the video and I think you'll see it was further over than you thought it was. Okay, last point. <clears throat> last point. All right. All right, come on in, everybody. Okay, so today we worked on blocks. We worked on blocking deep, we worked on blocking short. We learned that we're Typically not supposed to block into the opportunity zone because that gives our opponents an opportunity to move forward. Uh, we worked, uh, we did all of our structure warm-up stuff, uh, and then we finished with the this is kind of the first iteration of the uh, the uh, uh, opportunity game with a drive. Any questions about what we did today? Yep. Still hanging, not moving forward. Yeah. yeah. What else did you do wrong today, Margaret? Push you around? What else did you do wrong? <laughs> <laughs> it's a problem. What did you do right? You did an awesome shot there. That's like I can still see the problem when it's in the middle. Because it's just it's happening all the time during the game. Yeah. I just, I'm going to look at each other and go like, no. no, I didn't know this rule that it had to be the bag. So it's, it's, not, it's, it's, not it's not a rule. That's one tactical system. Uh, it's called respect the axe. Some people say forehand covers the middle. That's the most common way to yeah. play it. Uh, yeah. It will get you in trouble. Yeah, when, you, when you're playing random part of drop in. But yeah. if you're playing with a team member, respect the axe is the, the best way to play. It's the best way to learn to play because then you can play as a team. Um, Yeah. Well, that's the other thing I'm working on is poaching. Poaching is not a bad thing. Yeah. Jim poaches all the time. Brent poaches all the time. It's a, it's a skill. It's a skill. Yeah. It's a skill. Yeah, they might even poach it when they knew what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Being out of position and poaching are two different things. Yeah. Okay. I have a. I have a. Other side. Yeah. Just give me one second. So there are a whole bunch of nested skills in this thing, and every time you come back, you'll work on something a little bit different. We could do this, we could do just this drill, or yeah, for this drill. We just do just this drill for the next six weeks, and every day you would be able to learn something. There's so much in it. So I'm going to first, and then you. Okay, yep. I was just playing with Peter yesterday, and every time I didn't coach, he looked at me like, right? So you'll have people like that that go, 
that was your coach. Like, where the hell were you? Yeah. Right? So, so be careful of positioning and coaching. But what I wanted to ask you is to reiterate the difference between a volley and a ground stroke. Oh, volley is something you hit out of the air. Ground stroke is something that you hit after it bounces on the ground. Did you get that? Get that? <coughs> All right, Mark? Right. Was it me? Oh. No, in in, uh, in random partner drop-in where you, you're not playing uh, team doubles, doubles team game, um, just look after yourself and let the other person develop. So they're there to develop and learn too. Some people develop only by playing, slow development, but they'll, they'll develop. Some people aren't even there to develop. They're just there to get some exercise. That's, that's their thing. So don't feel that you have to win every game. You want to develop good habits in random partner doubles. And... Covering, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I'm that's yeah, that's the team game. You can't work on random partner doubles in or team game in random partner doubles. You just can't. Unless every like we're all part of the same group. So if we were all at random partner doubles and we were going out, I'd say, okay, we're gonna respect the X. And we would move as a team because we do that in here, right? But with somebody that doesn't know you, it's you can't you can't be teaching them on court. People yeah. don't come to pick a ball to be taught, right? Yeah, yeah, you know. So just work on your own stuff. I got to wrap up because it's nine o'clock.